Hello and welcome to Connect Roundtable Discussion. This is the first roundtable discussion of the year 2023. My name is Gaspar and I am very glad to be your host for tonight. With me here are some wonderful, wonderful people with life experiences to help us discuss the topic on table today. The topic we are going to look at tonight is why marry? So it's a question that needs answering and we're going to try to tackle to answer every aspect of what marriage is. So I will quickly let all of us introduce ourselves. So you just start, I will start from my right hand, mention your name, uh, your status, and how long you've been married, if you are, uh, and how long you've been single too, if you are. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, yeah, my name is Jav, and uh, I have been uh, married for two months. Um, yeah, I just got into this journey, um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Michael, um, I'm single. And I hope by the end of this uh, discussion, I would have learned why marry. And by the end of the discussion, this year you are marrying. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hello, my name is Antoinette, and I have been married for 10 years. And I am glad to be here today. And hopefully this will be a wonderful thing for those who are out there and seeking to marry. And knowing that marriage is a wonderful institution from God. My name is Barbara, and um, yeah, as I said, I'm single, and I'm looking to also learn something from this discussion, um, and then hopefully, you know, God willing, I would also embark on this journey for marriage. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Alfred. I'm also 10 years in marriage. I'm also seeking to go more in marriage, so I might also learn something from here as the time goes on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Esmond, and I've been married for three years. And um, I believe we are all here to learn from each other's experiences in marriage. So, yes, yeah, that's it. That's it. Basically, as the question is, why marry? But before we go into um, answering it and diving more into marriage and what it entails, we want to kind of bring a definition to it. We want to define it so that if somebody is listening and doesn't understand what marriage is, he's heard about it. He's seen that people are getting married all the time. But what at all? How do you define marriage? Hi. So um, marriage itself is an institution which has been ordained by God from the beginning when he created the world. So it was when Adam and Eve was made and then he understood the fact that when a man and woman comes together, there is greater things that they will actually achieve. So he brought us together. If I may add to what our brother had just said, marriage is a union between two people. And the scripture says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and he shall cleave to his wife and them two shall be one. Hence, there isn't any third party in a marriage. A marriage is instituted, instituted between only two people. These are the two people only that are in that union. They both had taken a very great choice to say, I am ready to compromise. I am ready to move from whatever capacity I am to meet another person right in the middle. And we too are going to work together. Not even children are permitted to be a gap in this particular marriage. They are a blessing to the marriage, but they should not determine what the marriage is. The marriage must be based between these two people. The marriage must be established between these two people. It must be seen that these two people are greatly committed and they are a team not working against each other. Uh, with that said, we are in a, we're in a time, I, I believe that I should ask this. 
and we can talk about it, but uh, we are in a time where so many things are being redefined. So even who a woman is, is being redefined. You can't go by the traditional definition of who a woman is without offending somebody. So marriage itself is also facing that challenge where it's being redefined as, oh, two people. But the two people, who are the two people involved? Is it a male, a female, or a male and a male, a female and a female, or anybody, it's just two people. It doesn't matter who they are. I believe that uh, we, ca we can talk about that uh, using this platform so that each and every one of us can uh, tell us what you think about it, what uh, the Bible has to say about it, and what your belief about this thing is. Yeah. So, Brother Frank, if you want to help us start. If we are talking about a Christian marriage, then it's between a man and a woman, according to the Bible. What makes a Christian is his Bible or her Bible. Mm -hmm. So you can't do away with the Bible and make decisions. The moment you forsake the Bible, as Pastor always say, it means you're being disobedient to God, and that reason you are not having a Christian marriage. Mm -hmm. So I believe, per my belief as a Christian, is between a man and a woman. I believe, um, first of all, when God created man, he didn't say, I'm going to create another Adam to um, complement Adam. He said, I'm going to create a woman to complement the man. So therefore, um, if God himself has initiated it and has said that it should be between opposite people, not the same people, then that means it is something he himself cherished. And he believed that it is something that is um, worth it for our generation. So the next question I will ask is, how do you know that you found the right person? Because if it's between two people and um, you are, these two people are coming together in that institution of marriage to be one and work as a unit, how do you identify the right person good for that institution you are entering into. That agreement, how do you know that you are choosing the right partner for it? Yeah, my brother, two months. Yeah, you are fresh in this, so. Yeah, yeah I, like two, uh, no, two months, three months ago, you were single. <laughs> how did you realize that she was, she the, was the right one. person? Um, okay, I, as you, know, you, you put the question, the right person, it's different, you know, it's what do you find right, you know, it's right for me, it's not the same as right for you, or so the suitable, I think everyone has a suitable criteria. Some of the things to consider, or some of the things that I, I yeah, I considered is, it started from knowing me, so knowing um, my knowing the character that I am, you know, compatibility-wise, how I know that I could, I can work with, how well I can work with, what type of what type of person I can work well with, mm -hmm. and uh, that leads into you know like vision, um, as yeah, where I see myself in the future, how I want to get there, um, and then try to visualize, you know, who's next to me, not in terms of like. Uh, physical features, but character, you know, how I, yeah, who I can, what character does my wife need to have for me to be able to, um, or for us as a family to be able to achieve, achieve, that achieve vision. goals, yeah. vision, uh, work together, um, living in the same house, you know, mm -hmm. seeing, actually seeing each other 24 seven, um, you know, sharing spaces. So, um, it starts from, um, yeah, I think it starts from uh, knowing you, um, the vision that you see yourself with, and uh, nonetheless, prayer. You know, okay. once you, I, I'm sure we'll get to this more deeply, but I think it's, uh, yeah, these are some starting yeah. points, I would say. But, you know, sometimes um, as human beings, we might think that um, somebody, exhibits the whole feature of what we actually need 
as a, a couple or as a person we want to get married to. Mm -hmm. So what if, um, in that case, what we think that it is, the person is exhibiting, but in, God actually doesn't want us to get married to that person. What do you do? Mm -hmm. uh, to answer your question, uh, I think he, he said something that uh, if um, we had him uh, about knowing yourself, and I would say that if you God says no, then that means you haven't really answered the question of who you are. Yeah. Because God will give you yeah. somebody that will help you fulfill the purpose he has given you. And so if you know yourself and know what purpose God has given you yeah. and what who you are, as in who God uh, has purposed you to be and where you are heading to, then you know that, okay, this person is also right for me. And if that person really fits in there, then God will not say no. He will not give you something else. If God is saying no, then that means you are choosing someone not fit for the purpose. One of our conferences we do have in church, the man of God said that uh, we, you find your purpose, then you find the person that fits the purpose. But don't find a person and now go and find a purpose. Because then when the purpose comes... Try to fit them together. Yeah. The person will say that, no, oh, I didn't she, sign for this. That's not my purpose. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. But uh, what do you think? Does anybody have anything else, anything else to say about this? My major thing about marrying anyone was someone who believed in my faith. That's all I ever wanted in someone. I wanted someone who is committed to the gospel. So when you meet someone and you feel to yourself that, oh, I want this person, and they are not a Christian at all, and in your mind you think, oh, that person, we're so compatible that I can change them, they can change them. But the one thing that I wasn't going to do is change anyone to the, to the gospel for them to marry me. My husband and I, we are very opposite, mm. I would say. He's a very, like, bubbly kind of people, person, very likable, and then laid back in whatever sort of things. He doesn't take things and think they must work now. I am quite opposite to that. I am very, like, um, purposeful, and I know what I want, how I want it, and when it should work. What I grew to learn, I would have taken a lens of looking at it and think to myself that, oh my goodness, he doesn't want to do things the way I want them. And therefore, he's not a suitable partner for me because what I want to do is when I want to do it. But I take a lens to the positive. I need someone who then tells me that you're going too fast and you must stop a little bit. You shouldn't take these things like the way you are taking them because if you take them that way, it's not going to work. That he then has the ability to see those because then when he is sitting back and thinking, it's not my time yet, I'm waiting, he does that. He gives the instruction of how we should go with it. So therefore, we become a very perfect and compa uh, compatible partners, but only because we have chosen to, to look at the situation in the lenses in which they will represent positive lens. Mm. If we had chosen the other way, it could be a clash every day, war every time. So when you have a partner, most of the things that you will see from out there and think to yourself that we're very compatible, they may be the complete opposite when you are right in the same house. Yeah. As Christians, it is your responsibility to take a deliberate and purposeful thought that my marriage must work despite whatever circumstances it is. I am not saying that you should stay there and die. That's not what I say. But what I'm saying is that you do whatever you think is necessary for the marriage to work. The next thing I want us to kind of uh, look at is, is it possible, first of all, I know we've, we might have answered this, but then is it possible to marry the wrong person? Is there such a thing as marrying a wrong person? And if there is, what do you do about it if you happen to be with the wrong person? Where do you go from here?